I feel like this is a topic that we needed to go over, but it's one that not too many people would think about when you bring it up, you know? Like, this is a weird one, and I'm not gonna go out there and discredit that, so... With all the talk about young guys, you know, we're heading into the draft, it's literally in a few days, everybody's talking about the rookie race, everybody's talking about the Calder, we're gonna have another video later in the week, I guess, talking about who's gonna be involved in next year's Calder showdown, it's gonna be fantastic, by the way, but... Because of the discussion going on about rookies, there is a name that is eligible for next year's Call of the Race, who a lot of people thought wouldn't have been. And the reason I say it like that is because one year ago, most people thought this guy would have been a full-time NHLer in 2223. Long story short, though, he wasn't. And now, in this video, I wanted to talk about what happens next, because the way things have gone, I think there's such a weird and confusing situation going on here, and it involves the Seattle Kraken. Now, you already read the title, you read the thumbnail, you know who we're talking about. Today, we're going over the fourth overall pick in the 2022 NHL entry draft, Shane Wright. This is a guy that was supposed to go first overall, and he was projected to being first overall for years heading into 2022. However, after a poorer draft season than people expected, plus a Montreal Canadiens team that decided they just wanted the big Slovak winger instead, and you have yourselves right who dropped from first overall projection down to four. The Simon Nemec train in New Jersey got started because they didn't need themselves another center, and you had the Arizona Coyotes who did most of their research on Logan Cooley, so they took him instead of Wright, leading the Seattle crack into taking the acclaimed first overall pick in the fourth overall spot. Now, we've been documenting Wright's entire season. He did not play the entire NHL year. He had a cup of coffee at the NHL. In fact, multiple cups of coffee split across two different stints. He had eight games played with the Kraken, had one goal that was against Montreal, for crying out loud, one assist for two total points. He was scratched for a boatload of time in the NHL, so much to the point that he was actually eligible to go down to the AHL. He got sent back to the OHL. He also played at the World juniors, he was all over the place. And his season was pretty okay. I mean, if you take a look at this big head hockey tweet, take a look at this. Shane Wright across the NHL, the AHL, and the playoffs in the AHL, plus the OHL and the OHL playoffs had 64 games and 57 points. Not that bad, honestly. Add in the gold medal at the World Juniors, and it's a pretty decent year for Shane. But realistically, what I wanted to talk about in this video was what happens next. Because the thing is, a lot of people would say, all right, well, Wright had his draft plus one year wherein the Kraken did not burn off a year on that ELC. He didn't get the nine games played in the NHL, yet they were able to play him pretty much everywhere they wanted to play him. He had a full playoff run in the AHL where he had nine points in 24 games, which isn't amazing, but the fact is he is an 18-year-old kid playing a full playoff run in the AHL. They lost in the finals, unfortunately, but he was still there. That's some great experience after all. But I'm not going to go out there and discredit the hurdles it took to even get him into the AHL. Because in order for this to happen, he had to be scratched for a certain amount of time on his NHL team. And then you had yourselves the demotion back to the OHL. He got traded over there to Windsor. He played in their playoffs. He had three points, four games played. He got eliminated by Philip Meshar and the Canadians' prospects over there in Kitchener. But after that, Shane Wright was eligible to play in the AHL's playoffs because with the Kraken out and with the OHL team also out, he got that opportunity. But this is where things get very interesting. Let's go over onto a tweet made by Brandon Seeley. He does the 32 Crew podcast. Talks about Shane Wright and what's next. Shane Wright played in the NHL, the AHL, the AHL playoffs, the OHL, the OHL playoffs, and the World Juniors this season. That's a ton of locker rooms. However, he is not eligible for the AHL next year because in order for his junior season to count, he had to play at least 25 OHL games. He only played 24. Training camp is going to be fire. This is where Kraken Canada replies, interesting username there. They need to fix the rules and regulations when it comes to AHL eligibility. Wright is too good for the OHL and teetering on playing in the AHL. 
We think he gets a shot in the NHL next season again, but it's a shame that if he's sent down, it's down to the O. And this is where things get really interesting because Shane Wright, as you can see, 20 games played in the OHL regular season, four games played in the OHL playoffs. He did not play the necessary amount of games for his OHL year to count as an OHL year. Because of this, he could only get sent down to the O next season. And realistically, the way Shane Wright performed in this year's AHL playoffs was not spectacular. Like, 9 points in 24 games, it's not the end of the world terrible, but it's not the end of the world amazing either. And so, with Wright, there definitely is an argument that says, hey, maybe this guy just isn't really ready. Like, sure, you could probably force him to be ready, you could probably put him in the NHL and he'll survive, he'll tread water, but is he ready? Is he ready to be what Shane Wright was supposed to be at the NHL? And you could definitely say, maybe we should give him some more time developing. But here's the thing, if you wanted to do that, the only destination he's allowed to go to is the OHL, unless you do this entire song and dance again next year, where you have Shane Wright in the NHL, but you just don't play him for two weeks straight. It's weird because this may have to happen again, or you could go out there and just remove all doubts and say, all right, screw it, Shane, you're in the NHL. You're playing 82 games, you're playing with the Kraken, and we'll see what you got. But the point is, you could understand if that's not the way the Kraken want to go down. You could understand if the Kraken are kind of hesitant to do that. If they said, all right, well, we just don't really feel like you're fully ready. Now, to his credit, I mean, I saw Shane Wright play a few times last season with the Kraken, particularly against Vancouver, and I thought he looked amazing. But... The point is, you could debate he's not even ready. He wasn't dominating the AHL playoffs. He wasn't dominating the OHL playoffs. And so, now, I know a lot of Canadians fans are going to tune into this video and be like, ha ha, look at that, Shane Wright. But this is a weird thing. Like, I don't really know if this is all too common in the NHL either. It's one of those things where you really start to understand, like, this is why some prospects just deserve to be in the AHL. Like... I think that for Shane Wright and his development, it's probably best case scenario for him to not have any pressure, not start out in the NHL, but if it was possible, play the full season in the AHL, get more comfortable with the pro men's game, get a little bit more rugged, make a little bit better decisions, and start to work a little bit harder before getting thrown into the wolves, because if the Kraken are so hesitant to just play Shane Wright in the NHL, they feel like he's not ready then sending him to the OA shell isn't really going to help him out too much either. I mean, he was already at 90 plus points in his draft year in the OA shell. What more in his draft plus two year? Like, it's so unnecessary, but it's the only option available to him unless the Kraken do the entire thing they did this previous season where they scratch him and they send him to the World Juniors and all that. I mean, look, he is eligible for the World Juniors, I'm pretty sure, this upcoming December, so... There's a possibility there. They really wanted to do the exact same thing, but we'll see what happens as time goes on. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Shane Wright and the entire idea of his 23-24. Do you think the Kraken have an easy decision here? Just play him in the NHL or send him to the OHL? What are your thoughts on how he played in the OHL playoffs? What are your thoughts on how he played in the AHL playoffs? What are your thoughts about where he should be for next season? And is there some sort of an exception that needs to be made? Of course, it's not going to happen. But do you think there needs to be some sort of a rule or an exception for guys under this very specific circumstance? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.